a sudden the radio stopped working and then that flooding just disappeared. A crazy forest. Is this who I think it is? Casey, say hello to Alan Wake. Mr. Wake, this is Special Agent Alex Casey. He'll escort you to our car. Casey, I'll meet you there right after I take a look around. If the flooding's receded, there might be evidence we missed earlier. Okay. See you there. Alex Casey? How? Oh, I see. Oh. Oh, I guess we'll just go back to the car, I guess. It's optional anyway. It's optional, so we'll just go back to the car. I see. station I need to go up I just wanted to go it's this way that's fair enough understandable yeah well I hope it gets fixed in Oh yeah, we can see the shortcut, can't we, for the murder site. Yeah, through here. Yeah, we'll go back to the car. Oh. What's this up here? What's this sound? Wait, can we, can we heal at any point? Uh-huh. There we go. Yeah, I played the first one already. This is this is obviously it. Uh, yeah, I played the first one. Uh, but it's really, really good. I'm loving it so far. I'm loving it. Okay, why is it making a noise? Do we investigate? Yeah, it's really good. What is that? Why is it making that noise? Are we alarmed right now? I feel like it's nothing. Yeah, we'll just ignore it, I guess. Parking lot, which is here. I'm guessing this is where the car is. Hopefully, it is. Oh, there it is. All right, let's get out of here. Keep pressing the wrong button. Mr. Wake, we're taking you back to our field office in Bright Falls. You can freshen up there, and then we'll talk properly. Hey, Mom. 
Before you see anything, I'm totally fine. Don't freak out. Dad shouldn't have even texted you. Logan? No one texted me. What's going on? I'm totally fine. I slipped, that's all. God, it's not the end of the world. Put your father on the phone. Um, okay. Dad, it's Mom. Don't worry, hun. Logan slipped in the shower and bumped her head. She has a slight concussion, but I'm keeping an eye on her. Lucky I heard her fall. She could have drowned. Jesus, David. Why didn't you call? I tried. It didn't go through. She's fine, really. But what about you? You sound stressed. No, it's, uh... Just a weird case, that's all. Well, if you need a hint, my years of board game victories tell me Colonel Mustard did it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> Love you, Dave. Love you too, honey. Wanna say bye to Logan? Just tell her I love her. Bye for now. Is there anyone you'd like us to reach out to, Mr. Wake? You've been gone a long time. No. No. If they'd be in danger, it'll come for me. Okay, let's talk about something else. Robert Nightingale. Do you know him? You were both here in 2010. The Dark Presence got him back then. That's the last time I saw him. 13 years. Hey. Tell us about the pages. You had what looks like a title page with you. Return. Is this the name of the story on these pages? The writer's name has been scratched out pretty violently. But your name can still be made out underneath. <laughs> scratched out. Yeah. Scratch. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember. It's, it's, it's a crazy jumble, like, a, like a nightmare. I, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I really like the um, the model of Alan Wake in this one. Whoa. Okay. What the hell is going on right now? He does. Or oh, even in this. You know what? I'm so glad we get to play as Alan Wake. Oh my god! Talk show tonight. Waking up in places with no memory of how I got there. It was out of control. I didn't need another mugshot in the fucking tabloids. Had I already done the show? Was that a recording? Oh! Oh, 
Good to see you, Alan. Great to see you. Welcome back to the show. Come on, come on, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, man. It is so good to see you, Alan. Uh, uh, this must be an exciting time for you. Tell me, does it ever get old? So does what get old? Publishing a new book. Are you okay there, my friend? You look like you've been cooped up in the writer's room for <laughs> many years. This is exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, I've waited so long to get my hands on the sequel to Departure. You left us on quite the cliffhanger. We've all been dying to know what it's not a lake, it's an ocean really means. You and me both. Well, our wait is over. Your new book, Initiation, hits the shelves tomorrow. What? That's exactly what every reader will be asking. This book is mind-bending. It's so cerebral. I mean, how would you describe it? A, an yeah, pretty much. Experiment, a, a, a horror story, a postmodern detective story. Wait, this isn't right. I, I haven't written anything. He's so humble. Okay, you got me. Good prank, very funny. But yeah, I sad to say, I, I, I've not written this. I'd remember if I'd written a book, right? Or maybe it was written by your evil double. <laughs> well played, man. That is spot on. Playing the role here. Pretending the world of the book overlaps our own. Very meta indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten he has written. The book is set in New York, but it might not be New York at all. He is tormented by his dark doppelganger, guided by visions of a fictional detective he has written. That's right, Alex Casey is in this book as well. Uh, Woo. I guess we'll just keep doing this the whole show. The joke's on me. Duh. Isn't that what you sign up for with autofiction? No, but seriously, I found the the structure of the reality you build in the book fascinating. It reminded me of the Matrix. I mean, the writer is physically in his writer's room, trapped there, and he projects himself out to this dark dream of New York through the story he is writing. Uh, like astral projection. Did I get that right? Yeah. That's exactly right. Go on. I should be taking notes here. This is great stuff. Notes to that other Alan Wake in that room writing this as we speak? Are we all in your story, Alan? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I wish you every success with your new book, Alan. I hope it's as successful as your best-selling Alex Casey series. Initiation hits the shelves tomorrow. After this, I'm sure we'll all be eagerly awaiting the culmination of this hero's journey trilogy of yours. Yeah, he's like, huh? Yeah, Called pretty much. Return, perhaps. <laughs> Man, thank you for one of the strangest interviews of my entire career, Alan. Oh. oh. Talk of meta narratives. I have to expect them to disappear once this scene ends. Oh wow, uh, that's super cool, going from like, sort of like real life to like this sort of stuff. Something's not right here. I needed to get home to Alice. What the hell was that interview? Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. I need a code. Mr. Door. I was a mess. I had never heard of this talk show or Mr. Door before. None of it felt right. Was I losing my mind? Old Gods of Asgard. That name sounded familiar. 
Yeah, it's that banjo map in the, in the first one. I need to, I need to code. Whatever that is. What would the code be? Oh! Oh! Is in the code on my hand? Six, six, five. Uh, six, six, five. There we go. What the hell? There was something in the studio with me. I had to get out. for air this place felt familiar a ghost of a memory surfaced about riding here for countless days a plot board for mapping out a story on the index cards the nightmare that just happened to me a summary of the story so far but other notes as well Warnings. I had written them. I couldn't remember what it all meant. The name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. I had to act on them. You must write to escape. It's really, really good. Really, really good. Dark place. I use my writing to project myself out of this room, like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. Definitely worth it. I would start again at the talk show. Okay, so I gotta do I gotta repeat it again. We'll treat all you Alex Casey fans out there. Alex Casey himself is here tonight. That's right. Stand right, ladies and gentlemen. The actor who has given his face to the famous detective in the film series. And of course we have Alan Wake here. Best selling writer, the books, the films are based on. Let's do this! Welcome back to the show. So, Alan, as the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? <laughs> I, I know it can be an awkward question with the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks exactly <laughs> like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. 
That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh, what's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I, I, I feel protective about my stories and these adaptations. I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well, in that case, you won't have seen. Yeah, same. Story. We have a clip from the new film Murder Case Case. Should we roll it or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. <laughs> This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I was trying to track down a missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp shaped like an angel. The only thing to shed light on this sordid mystery. I do like that. That That's sort of great. effect. What a case, Casey. Great job, Sam. Very exciting and very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. <laughs> Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? Alright, let's get out of here again. Ooh, it's wrong this time. Okay. Well, that's different. Six, five, five, six, five. Well, I like how they switched it up. That was that was clever. Guessing it's through here again. Oh, that's different Hello? every time. Dinosaur office. Oh. <gasps> it's him from. It's him from control. Oh, not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. Not one without the other. <laughs> good to see you. <sighs> Looking for the exit. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? <laughs> of course, Tom. The work will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but you can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> uh, so, I'm sorry, have we met? Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place too? You remember Arti? The janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. <laughs> so don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. What's in the basement? What do you want me to get from the basement? And my name's Alan, not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got up a man's a man, but a man with a tool makes two, Tom. And a man with a tool can make his own exit. It's in a shoebox in the basement where you left it. Safe as in the Lord's purse. 
Here's the key. Thank you. I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mulls about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. The janitor was a bit out there, <laughs> but still a friendly face. I had to trust the basement would get me out of here. Hey, what? Basement. Ah, here we go. I'm so glad he's back as a cameo. Okay. Oh. Ah. Oh yeah, because it was like t there was like two sides of this uh, game, isn't there? There's the FBI side, uh, the the woman in the FBI. Wait. Okay. And then there's uh, Alan Wake's thing. An old lamp and a shoebox. Was this what the janitor had left for me? The lamp felt significant. A tool for bringing light to the darkness. I felt a magnetic pull between the lamp and the light overhead. Whoa! When the light jumped into my lamp, the whole room changed, like something in a dream. Opening a way forward, the lamp was humming, the bulb glowed, it held the light now. Hmm. I felt another surge from oh. the lamp. I could use the glow in the lamp went out, uh -huh. shifting the light in the room. The light carved out something new from the darkness. Oh. I see. Uh, and then back down again, I guess. Or is this way? Oh, here we go. A TV. Hmm. Um. This is this is different. Uh.
There we go. I guess it's over this TV here. Aha. The dark place wants to drown me. I'm losing myself. I have to fight it. I have to remember the clicker. The light switch. I lost it. But I have the lamp now. The lamp the switch was cut from. This place is a nightmare. Not real and yet more real than anything. The danger and the horror are real. It feeds off my mind. Twisting whatever it takes into psychotic reality. I'm trapped here. I write to escape. I've tried this many times. Written countless stories. Forgotten how many. I keep failing. But I must keep trying. I use the story to dive deeper. Every word I write is a step forward on this spiral of the darkness. I dive to the bottom to find the answer, the, the map, and the key, and the compass that's combined to form a door leading out. But how do you open a door that's not a door? At the bottom of an ocean that's not an ocean, and a lake that's not a lake. <laughs>